Welcome to the first ever Crease Array Network Virtual College Fair. We congratulate you students and parents for taking the next step in preparing for college by attending today. We're so glad you're here. And we're glad Father John Foley is here as well. Thank you, Elizabeth. It's, it is indeed a, a privilege and, a, and a, a blessing to be able to collaborate in this uh, first ever event for the Cristo Rey Network, the Cristo Rey Network Schools. You know, all of us, all of us, students, um, teachers, parents, all of us were born with certain gifts and all we go through life trying to make those gifts contribute even more to the world we live in. Uh, this world is our responsibility. God entrusted this world to us and it's up to us to make the best of what God has given us. And that's what education is all about. It's about, it's about taking what the gifts that God has given us, the virtues that God has implanted in our souls, and making them as effective as they can be. So education is a way of making, making my contribution to the world even better. Thank you, Father Foley. So students, today your community surrounds you. With over 23,000 alumni nationwide and 37 high schools in 24 states, Currently 12,000 students and 5,000 of those students are juniors and seniors, just like you. We're joined by 115 participating colleges. These colleges are ready to invest in your future. Some of these colleges have been partnering with us for over a decade. You'll have the opportunity, students and parents, to attend a financial aid 101 session offered in either English or in Spanish. If you don't attend every session, don't worry, it'll be available on YouTube, so you won't miss anything. Don't forget about the Ask Me About session. This is your opportunity to ask any question you want and to leave confident that you came and feel empowered to start your college journey. We thank you all for your commitment to your future, classes of 2022 and 2023, and your parents and guardians students, college counselors, and college representatives. Thank you all for being here. Como una última palabra, le, bendi, le pedimos al Señor que bendiga a todos los que están envueltos en, esta, en este esfuerzo de, de familiarizarnos con, mejor con el mundo académico de la universidad. Que el Señor bendiga la buena voluntad y, los, y, los, y los, la, la, el deseo de todos de, para mejorar este mundo y para mejorar la, las vidas de los que nos rodean. Que el Señor bendiga este gran familia Cristo Rey. Welcome to the first ever Cristo Rey. Welcome to the Cristo Rey Network College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Anna and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Cristo Ray. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, Providence College. Take it away. All right, thank you very much, Anna. I will get up as I share my screen here. And, and we're off. All right, so my job tonight is to define Providence College, uh, who we are as a campus, who we are as a university, and why you should think about doing a little bit more research um, about who PC is. So my name is Matt Morano. I'm an Associate Dean of Admission. Uh, I'm also a Providence College alum. I am a little unbiased, or a little biased, I should say, when it comes to Providence College. I think I had a great four years there. Uh, and I think it's a great place to learn as a student and to grow as a person. So we're located right in Providence, Rhode Island, an hour south of Boston, about three hours east of New York City. Pretty accessible to get to by uh, public transportation. You can take the Amtrak, 
And there's a station right in downtown Providence, which is about five minutes away from where our campus is located. Here are just some fast facts about Providence. If you know nothing about us, this is kind of the crash course about who Providence College is. So we're a little over 100 years old. We celebrated our centennial anniversary not too long ago. And I think something that makes us really unique and stand out is the fact that we're the only school in the country that was founded and is still run by Dominican friars. So there's about 40 Dominican priests that you would see on campus. Uh, they do things that you might expect a priest to do, like say mass and teach philosophy or theology courses. But I've also seen Dominicans paint their faces for basketball games. Uh, I've seen one start a food fight in the dining hall. His identity shall remain a secret, but needless to say, they are a pretty big staple in everyday life on our campus. Here's a snapshot of our student body. Um, as you can see, we're just over 4,000 students. And so I like to describe us as kind of a medium institution where we are a big enough place that you'll see new people and new faces essentially every day. But at the same time, the average class size is about 20 students, and it's a pretty easy place to have a good group of friends that you will spend a lot of time with. Um, you're not going to get lost on our campus, but at the same time, you're not a number, and your professors definitely get to know you pretty well. You can see from the slides where students are coming from and what they choose to major in. Obviously, there's a lot of choices. There's 49 different majors and 39 different minors on campus. So there's a lot that students can choose to study over the course of their four years. The other really unique aspect, apart from the fact that we're a Dominican college, is the, this Development of Western Civilization course, which we call CIV. That's a two-year class that everyone takes on campus, regardless of what you major in or what you end up studying. And it's a pretty big foundational piece at Providence because the skills that you learn in that class are gonna be rel uh, relatable and applicable to basically any major over the course of your four years. It's a pretty heavy emphasis on critical thinking and problem solving skills, but at the same time, you dive pretty deep into ancient Greece all the way up to modern society and today's world. So the scope of that class is pretty big, but you definitely cover a lot of ground that's relatable to what you study. The thing that's unique about it is the fact that not only is it two years and every student takes it, but it's also an interdisciplinary course that is team taught by a group of professors. So typically there are three or four professors that make up a development of Western Civ team and they guide you through all freshman and sophomore year on our campus. I think there's a saying, at least when it comes to academics, that learning happens everywhere. And what we mean by that is that you're not just learning in the classroom, but you're, you're learning about yourself, you're learning about others in basically everything that you're doing. Uh, obviously the classroom is where you'd expect to do a lot of your learning, but in things like intramural sports and the clubs and activities that you're involved in, even though it's not necessarily a strict academic activity, you, that information that you learn about yourself and that you learn about others is going to serve you well, not only in your four years at PC, but in your time beyond Providence as well. I think an easy way to demonstrate that is in study abroad. Uh, and as you can see from the slide, 60% of our students end up incorporating study abroad over the course of their four years. Obviously, with a global pandemic, uh, you know, last year, it, it, no one studied abroad because everyone was remote, uh, but we do have students that are currently studying abroad in this fall semester, and we hope to have uh, a little bit more back to normal once we get to the spring semester for this year. But there's no major that would ever prevent you from studying abroad. It's something that everyone can do, and it's really encouraged by our professors. We think that's a very valuable experience for you to carry forward as you go, you finish your PC career and in your, four, in your years after that as well. Internships and, and job shadowing and practical experience are also a pretty huge component for us. The fact that we are so close to a downtown capital city means that access to different businesses and companies and, and availability of internships is really easy for our students. It's very easy to navigate and get around to downtown Providence from our campus. And so this makes it really easy for students to fit internships into their schedule. Not only is it during the school year, but over the summer, we connect students with different employers for internships pretty easily. And so if you live in an area where over the summer you might find a, a better opportunity for an internship, we got you covered there too. 
It's also pretty important to know that when our students graduate, they have a pretty easy time finding a job. As you can tell from the slide, 96% of students are employed or in graduate school um, once they graduate. And that is obviously a big deal uh, as you're looking to make a pretty big investment into the next four years. The other nice thing about Providence is the fact that we are a Division I athletic college. Uh, and that's pretty rare for schools our size. There are not many like small to medium sized schools that are D1. But when you add to that, the fact that we're also pretty good in the sports that we offer. And I think that that is a really big draw for a lot of prospective students, and a lot of our current students on campus. The past couple of years have really been the most successful in the school's history. As you can see, hockey won a national championship not too long ago. And that's always a really big um, piece of student life because you're not sacrificing the big school athletic atmosphere but you're also you also have that small academic environment that i talked about a little bit earlier student life at pc is one where you're going to be doing things pretty much all the time uh it, you're going to have to try pretty hard to be bored as a student at providence college there's over 120 different clubs and organizations for you to get involved with and getting involved is as simple as signing your name up to a club and that's it you belong you have joined a different club on our campus. And so between intramurals, different campus ministry events, and other bigger student activities like different concerts, you will find that there's always stuff to do on campus. If you are ever bored on campus, then as I said, downtown Providence is five minutes away. And we think that that's a pretty great city for students to spend some time in. Uh, in addition to our campus, Brown University, Johnson and Wales, Rhode Island School of Design, the Community College of Rhode Island, and University of Rhode Island all have campuses in Providence. So what that means for you is that there's often a lot of things to do in the city that's pretty specifically geared toward college students. Uh, it's I always like, like to describe Providence as a good starter city, where if you don't really live in a city, then Providence is a good place to kind of explore and see what's out there. If you do live in a city, you'll feel right at home on our campus uh, and being so close to downtown because like I said, there's plenty to do, awesome food. I can give you a ton of food recommendations, but I'd probably be out of time by the time I finish all that stuff. So I'm nearing the end of my time, but I just wanted to give a quick plug to actually come visit campus. Uh, we are welcoming in-person visitors all year round. So if you head to the website, we have a, a couple different ways where you can visit. Obviously a campus tour and info sessions, the main one, but I always like to plug the shadow program, which is called A Day in Friartown. And you'll get paired up with a current Providence College student and basically spend the day with them. They'll go to their classes, eat lunch in the dining hall, test out the food, see what their dorm is like. And it's a really good way for you to see what your everyday life would be like at Providence College. So I think that just about wraps up my time. Thanks up, or thank you for listening. And I hope you have a great rest of the evening. Take care, everyone. All right. I will stop my screen. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Bay Path University. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for um, welcoming me here tonight. And I'm very excited to be able to chat with you and share more about Bay Path University. Um, for those of you not familiar with Bay Path University, um, we are located in Longmeadow, Massachusetts, um, in beautiful New England. Um, my name is Katie Keith Hunter. I am the Director of Traditional Admissions here at Bay Path, um, and I've been at the university for about six years. Um, I am really excited to, to share what's so beautiful and special about Bay Path um, and specifically our mission. Uh, Bay Path is a university that provides education and empowers undergraduate women 
and graduate women and men to become leaders in their careers, as well as in their communities. Uh, we really have innovative approaches to learning that prepare students to flourish in our world, which is constantly changing, um, as we all know. And it's just important to note that Bay Path University at the undergraduate level is a women's institution. However, we do welcome all genders, everybody at uh, in our graduate level programming. So Baypath has a long history of providing wonderful education for students. We were established in 1897. Uh, we're about to celebrate our 125th year anniversary, which is a very exciting buzz around campus. Uh, Baypath is an accredited university, which is always important to, to be able to know. Uh, we're a member of the eight college consortium, which consists of eight colleges in our local Western New England area, including Springfield College, American International College, Western New England College, uh, where students can enroll in courses um, to and from each, each institution to be able to fill in um, any courses that they're interested in for their majors. We have a total university enrollment of about 3,300 students. And on our main campus in Longmeadow, we have about 700 undergraduate students. Uh, you will not be a number here. Uh, you will be a member of the community. Everybody will know you by name, including our president, President Sandra Doran. She will see you across campus. She will say hello to you. She will have lunch with you. Um, so our average class size is about 16 students and we have a 12 to one student faculty ratio. That's really important for all of our scholars here at Bay Path that they know they're a member of the community and we know each other. So if you're not familiar with New England or Massachusetts at all, and probably not Long Meadow, uh, we are located in a really lovely small town, but very close to a lot of major cities with great attractions near us. Our closest major city is Springfield, Massachusetts for just 10 minutes down the road. Uh, we're also very close to Hartford, Connecticut, not far from Providence, our friend here today, um, as well as Boston, Albany and New York City. So really a beautifully centrally located um, and a really uh, wonderful area for attractions, including our Basketball Hall of Fame. Um, we have a great mall in this area and we have the Eastern States Exposition. So plenty to do uh, in the local area, but also here on campus. So let me take you around our campus. Um, we are a small institution, but we've got some really beautiful places for you to build your community and grow as an academic and an individual. Um, our Blake Student Commons houses our dining hall as well as um, a cafe, including Starbucks products. We have a fitness center, which students have access to throughout their entire uh, career here, as well as into there um, after you graduate. So you have access to that as an alum. We have a dance studio, a bookstore. We can buy all your swag as well as your uh, class needs. Uh, we have a wonderful Sullivan Career and Life Planning Center, which you'll utilize throughout your four years. Um, and we have uh, the Office for Athletics, our student life, and accessibility services. We have three major academic buildings, including Elliott Hall, Demore Hall, and Carr Hall. Um, you will be able to, you will have classes in all of these buildings. Um, many of our class, classes include science labs. We have faculty offices, which they are always accessible. Again, community is so important to us. Great study areas. You don't just have to study in your class, in your classroom or in your residence hall, but also throughout all of the buildings you have access to. Living on campus, we do offer on-campus housing uh, in three of our uh, residence halls. All of the residence halls have double rooms, lounges, kitchens, and free laundry. We've got some great study spots across campus as well. Our fire, fireplace lounge is really popular. We often have events there. The Office of Multicultural Affairs is truly a hub on campus. Lots of events, lots of community building, lots of opportunity to sit and uh, be productive as a scholar, but also to connect uh, as, as, uh, um, as fellow students and with your faculty and staff. And our Hatch Learning Commons is our beautiful, newly refurbished uh, library. Um, and one of our major programs here is interior design. The interior design students at Bay Path actually redesigned the entire library. So that's a really wonderful example of how students can take the things that they're learning and put them directly into practice. So with that said, Baypath offers a lot of programs. We have a really career-focused uh, 
uh, our, our programs are really career focused. We want to make sure that you are academically prepared for the things that you're interested in, but that you're also practically prepared for the world and your career. All of these programs that you see on your screen include um, excellent curriculum, but also infuse real world and life experience into all of your courses. We have programs in business, communications, education, justice, liberal studies, health and human services, preoccupational therapy studies, psychology, science, and technology. Now, what's really exciting this year is we're offering a new direct entry PA program, which is the physician assistant program. Many of our graduate program, many of our undergraduate programs have direct links to our graduate program. So if you're thinking long-term, we have some really great options for you to plan ahead. Now, the physician assistant program, um, this direct entry essentially allows incoming first year, first time undergraduate students to be able to get into our pre-PA program. And then uh, 30 of those students will go through a rigorous program. 10 of those students will be guaranteed a, a seat in our PA master's program, which is highly, highly competitive. There are typically only 30 seats in that program, and we receive about 2,000 applications across the country uh, from across the country every year. There are some other real beautiful advantages to Bay Path University, including our signature program, which is called Women as Empowered Learners and Leaders, or as we all call it, the WELL program. This program includes uh, curriculum designed specifically for our scholars to learn how to be a student, learn how to be a powerful individual in your career. Um, you're going to be uh, taking a class each year. They are credit bearing. Students take a cl one class each year that really helps infuse all pieces of being a scholar, not just the academics, not just the research, but everything, really empowering you as an individual. Um, so you do earn credits for that. At Bay Path, you also, as I mentioned, have lifelong services to our career, uh, lifelong uh, connection to our career services. Um, we are also, as I mentioned, also cooperating colleges of Greater Springfield member where you can take classes at different institutions. And we offer quite a few accelerated degree options, as I mentioned, direct pathways to our graduate programs. So for those of you looking for honors opportunities, and um, sounds like you are all great scholars, um, we offer three honors programs. We have a, a general honors program, which is a four-year curriculum for women in any major. We offer women in business honors and a women in STEM honors as well. We have a really big focus on those two areas. There are scholarships available for each of these honors programs, which are uh, renewable each year. You can opt in or opt out at any point. You do take credit bearing courses for the honors program. Anything you're interested in, we have a lot to offer. Over 30 clubs on campus. If you don't see something that you've that you're looking for, you can start your own. Students are empowered all of the time to be able to uh, take their passions into the community, find others interested, and move on uh, to move on, move mountains essentially. If you're interested in the performing arts, we have dance groups, we have a choral group. Um, our programs are very musical. Um, and if you are interested in applying at um, any time, please do reach out. Seems like I'm at the end of my, my time here, but thank you very much. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from George Washington University. All right, good evening. I was like, good afternoon, everyone. Get everything set up. Cool. All right, so my name is Joshua Lowe. I'm an assistant director at the George Washington University. So we're located in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Um, pretty easy to get to DCA, which is um, Reagan National, which is right on the metro line. You can take that, the train that goes up and down the East Coast. There's buses. It's really easy and central, central to the East Coast, but it's really central to um, the U.S. as well. Now, where our campus is located in DC is pretty much right in the middle. Um, so right here, we are highlighting a lot of the different 
um, organizations and departments that you may know of. So we're right down the street from the Kennedy Center, the State Department, Pan American Health Organization, the IMF, the World Bank, and literally blocks away from a national mall. So what does that mean for our students? Our students are really able to get involved in DC, but they also have amazing opportunities when it comes to internships and research opportunities. Since there are so many happening both within the district and the DC Metro itself, students are able to jump onto the Metro or either just jump on a scooter or a bike and go to their internship or help with research there on campus or throughout the Metro, throughout the DC Metro. Now, one thing is we do have two campuses. So we have our Foggy Bottom campus, is the one I highlighted previously. And then we have our Mount Vernon campus. Now with that, you don't have to select one over the other. You will be taking classes on both campuses. So about one third of our students do live on the Mount Vernon campus, as well as there's a, whole, um, a lot of special programs that I'll go over a little bit later. All of our students will take at least one class on the Vern, which is what we call the Mount Vernon campus. And there are shuttles that go back and forth every 10 to 15 minutes, 24 seven. Um, with that, the Vern is a more traditional campus. So it's about two miles Northwest of the Foggy Bottom campus. It is uh, lots of green space, rolling hills. Uh, there's an outdoor pool and there's even deer. I know a lot of people don't think deer in DC, but there are deer in DC. So really you're able to bounce back and forth between the, the two campuses. And then on your first two years, we try to mirror both um, classes so that you can choose if you wanna be on Foggy or the Vern. Now we do have a little bit of a different dining plan here at GW. So while we do require our students to live on campus for three years, um, which I think is great. So you're not trying to figure out where in DC you need to stay. Um, our, dining, um, our dining is really interesting as we are putting money onto your GWID or your G World. You're then able to go to any of our different dining partners and pretty much just order what you want. So you can go to the GW Deli, Whole Foods, Beef Steak, multitudes of food trucks and restaurants throughout DC and try them as well as just get groceries, at the, and cook in your room. It's definitely a great thing, aspect of our dining plan because you're able to really customize what you like and really get to try new foods because DC really is a foodie city. Now we do have great student life. So we have over 50 different clubs and club sports and intramural sports as well as our division one sports, but we have over 500 clubs and organizations for our students to get involved in. So there's everything from Greek life, special interests, academic, political, honors, you name it, we have it. And if we don't have that organization, you can bring it onto campus. And when I say that, I truly mean it. When I started working at GW a few years ago, we had one K-pop dance troupe on campus. Now we have four. So you, again, you can definitely make that organization on campus if you would like to. And our students are also getting involved, not just on campus, but throughout the DC Metro. So you'll see our students walking around the mall or getting involved in DC, just anything in DC, as well as taking the Metro, which is located right on campus and going to out Northern Virginia or going to Maryland and really enjoying what is offered in our location. So when it comes to our academics, we have a couple different schools and colleges. So we have our first one is our Columbian College of Arts and Science. It's the biggest one. It has fine arts, liberal art. No, it doesn't have fine arts. I'm sorry. It has liberal arts, social sciences, and the kind of the hard sciences as well. So everything from biology to speech language pathology to political science all fall within there. We then have Corcoran School of Arts and Design, which is our school for fine arts. So graphic design, um, photojournalism are all within there, as well as dance and music. Then we have um, SNPA, our, our School of Media and Public Affairs, and that has journalism and mass communications. Then we have our Inter Elliott School of International Affairs. Now our Elliott School of International Affairs is actually across the road street from the State Department. So we actually have, um, professionals walk across and teach our students. So you're actually getting some great learning experiences because you're not just listening from someone who's done the 
theoretical experience, but has actually been boots on the ground in the area. We then have our school, uh, Milken School of Public Health, um, our School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, and our School of Business. And like I said earlier, with all of our different schools, we have a lot great opportunities, both for internships and research opportunities in all of them, both here on campus and across the district, but also we have opportunities across, you know, across the border. So you can do international um, internships, but you're also able to study abroad in all of our different majors. So we are never really stuck on campus. You can go anywhere the State Department lets us send you, and you can get your courses approved so they'll fit right into your academics. And you're able to use your financial aid and everything to go abroad. We also have a global bachelor's program that you're able to apply for our School of Business, um, College, uh, Columbian College, and our School of Public of International Affairs. Now with that, it's gonna do three study abroad experiences with the first one being in Hong Kong. Um, and then you're able to choose two other locations and you really are get to have a great international degree with that. Now here are our special programs I spoke of a little bit earlier. So I'm gonna kind of go about them a little bit differently. Um, so they may not appear quite as in order. So I'm gonna go over our LLCs first, but our, our living learning communities. So you'll be living with students that you're taking classes with um, and also doing stuff outside the classroom with. It's definitely a great experience and it also a great way to build community as you come onto a college campus. So we have Mount Vernon Camp um, Scholars, which has a focus of globalization and sustainability. Civic House, which is our community, um, LLC around community service. We then have Politics and Values, which is around politics, political theory, and political philosophy. Then we have our Women's Leadership Program, our WLP, which has a couple different cohorts within it. So you have one around business, one around international affairs, one's around, one around science and medicine, and then one around arts and culture. Now with this, is only a one year experience for all the LLCs, but you're able to be apply for them no matter what major you are and definitely get some great experiences out of them. Now we also have our university honors program, which is a four year experience. However, that first year it is a living learning community. So you will be housed on the Vern with other honors students. But after that, you're able to move between them. The Vern are foggy, but you're still going to be on the honors program. Now, we also have our BAMD, which is a seven-year program. So you do three years in your undergrad, and then you'll go be accepted automatically to our med school so you can complete your med degree. It is hyper-competitive. There's only 10 students selected every year. But with that, you will need submit your test scores. We're looking for students who have done some form of patient care or research. But it's definitely a great opportunity, especially if you are looking to go and pursue, get, um, get that MD. Um, I think we'll talk a little more about application if you have any questions, but we are on the Common App. We are an ED school, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and end. So if you do have questions or wanna know more about GW, definitely feel free to reach out to me um, or pop a question in the chat. Thank you. Lastly, we'll be hearing from Loyola University, Maryland. All right, well, good evening, everybody. Um, hope you've enjoyed all the presentations so far. Um, my name is Ben Weinstein, Assistant Director in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions here at Loyola University, Maryland. Really glad you guys are here with us tonight. So what I wanted to do was kind of kick off a little bit and start talking um, about just some of the things about Loyola and what makes us unique. So. One of the things um, is that we are a Catholic Jesuit liberal arts university. Um, so being Jesuit really means that we are gonna focus on different ideas um, within the whole person. So the first is this idea of discernment. So discernment means deep critical reflection. Um, so we wanna get to know who you are. You know, I've heard a lot of my colleagues reiterate that, you know, at their institutions, you're really, you're not a number, you're a person. And that is the exact same at Loyola. 
Um, we want to get to know your strengths. We want to get to know your weaknesses. We want to know how are we able to advise you um, in that when you graduate from Loyola in four years that you have become the person that you want to be when you leave. Um, and we do that through this idea of discernment and then this idea of care of personalis, which is care for the whole person. Um, so we were the first um, university in the United States that's named for St. Ignatius of Loyola. So he's the founder of the Jesuit order. Um, there are 27 Jesuit colleges and universities in the country. Um, so talking a little bit about just our demographics and you know who makes up Loyola, 76% of our students are going to come from outside of the state of Maryland. So Predominantly, the Northeast Quarter is very popular for us. So New York, New Jersey, uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island. Um, we draw really heavily from those uh, states, but we do represent over 40 different states in 30 different countries. Um, so our geographic diversity is one of our strongest um, things for a lot of our students is because that they're able to come to Loyola and interact with students who have very different backgrounds. We're about 4,000 students on what we call the Evergreen Campus. Um, so I think, you know, Providence kind of used this term, you know, kind of like we're a smallest to medium school, but they had like a clever name for it. Um, but so we're like not too big and we're not too small. We're kind of just right. And then importantly, about 26% of our students self-identify as a student of color. Um, this year, this past admission cycle, that number is actually closer to 33%, um, but we haven't quite approached our census yet. So we're not publishing that, um, but we are making big strides in the realm of diversity, equity, inclusion for all of our students. So one of the things to um, really know about Loyola is that we are located in the city of Baltimore. So Baltimore is a city of over 600,000 people, and there are over 160,000 college students that are made up between the 14 colleges and universities that are there. So this is a shot here from Federal Hill Park, one of the over 200 neighborhoods that our students can explore, looking into downtown Baltimore. So Baltimore, it is such an accessible city. We're 45 minutes from Washington, D.C., about two hours from Philadelphia, three hours from New York City. We do have an Amtrak station, Penn Station, just one mile away from our campus, so we are very accessible. As well as about 30 minutes away, we have BWI. It's our international airport. Baltimore is an amazing place to be a college student. Like I said, over 200 clubs and organizations, home of world-class medical institutions. So if you're interested in pre-health, University of Maryland, the Johns Hopkins University, we can help you get those internships. We can help you get those research experiences. That's why students choose to come to Baltimore. You know, we're home of the Baltimore Ravens, home of the Baltimore Orioles. So it is a thriving town where there's always something to do. But one thing I did wanna talk a little bit about was a little bit more focused back on our campus. And that's our first year learning experience called Messina. So Messina is a live and learn program in which during your first year, you're gonna be paired up with about 18 other students. And you're gonna take two courses. They're gonna last your entire year. Each, pro, each cohort is going to be given an upperclassman mentor, either a sophomore, junior, or senior, as well as two faculty advisors. So you know during your first year, you're going to have unlimited access to faculty members, to current Loyola students, and you're gonna really develop that strong network and you're gonna earn credits through two classes. So Messina for our students, it is required um, for all first year students really is a big difference maker for a lot of our students. Now, when you're talking about the classroom experience, we have over 35 different majors and over 45 different minors. We have an average class size of about 20 and a student to faculty ratio of uh, 12 to one. So when you're talking about academics at Loyola, you don't officially declare a major until December of your sophomore year. And then what that means is that if you're undecided, you can come into Loyola, take some courses in our core curriculum, see what interests you, and then you can declare a major. Or if you're a student, you know exactly what you wanna do, you can come and start taking those courses. And then when you declare a major, you will be set right away. So there's not a right or a wrong way. About 50% of our students are going to come in undecided. In our education, we're broken down across three schools. We have the Salinger School of Business. That is an um, AACSB accredited business school, as well as accounting program. To hold both of those accreditations, only 1.5% of colleges and universities hold those accreditations worldwide. 
Next, we have the School of Natural and Applied Sciences, which also includes social sciences as well as the arts and the humanities. So that's going to include everything from any of our pre-health programs to pre-law, the classics writing, our engineering program. It's all going to fit into there. And then lastly, we have our School of Education at Loyola as well. That really is going to lead to teacher licensure um, for students who are interested in elementary education. You can also stay at Loyola and get a certification um, for special ed as well. One of the most important things about Loyola is that we are 100% faculty taught. We do not have any graduate students teaching our classes. We do not have any TAs. Every time that you go to a class at Loyola, your faculty member is there 100% of the time. Now, when you're talking a little bit about how do you apply to Loyola, we are common application exclusive. So we're only on the common application. So the things necessary to complete it are your essay, official high school transcript, your counselor recommendation, teacher recommendation, the application fee, we do have waivers available, um, and we are also test optional. So we've been test optional for now 12 years. Um, so when we say we're test optional, we truly are test optional. Um, so you are not required to submit test scores. So that's either SAT or ACT test scores. But if you'd like to, you are welcome to. When you're talking a little bit about what does it look like to be admitted to Loyola, this is a little bit of our like middle 50%. On average, our students have about a 3.6 GPA. When you're talking test scores, if you're trying to decide, should I be test optional, should I not be test optional? It's about an 1170 to 1310 on the SAT, then about 26 to 31 on the ACT. Merit-based scholarships. So I understand that financial aid plays such a big part in so many students' decisions. So merit-based scholarships for us, those are gonna be awarded by the Office of Undergraduate Admission. Um, every student who is accepted to Loyola gets automatic consideration with a completed application. Notification is gonna be released in your admission decision. And so those scholarships are gonna range from $21,000 all the way up to $35,000. And that's purely just merit. Test optional students are eligible for merit-based scholarships in the exact same way. Um, so if you're thinking about being test optional, you are not discouraged. Um, from getting any of these scholarships that are available for our students. Now, on top of your merit-based um, scholarships, we also award need-based financial aid. So a big change for us this year is that we are no longer asking for the CSS profile. We ask for just the FAFSA. Um, so we ask that every student complete the FAFSA because that will determine any need-based financial aid. Um, so whether those are subsidized or um, unsubsidized you know, loans or talking about maybe work study. Um, we also do direct hire on our campus if you're not awarded work study through need-based financial aid. Um, but so just a FAFSA, 98% of our students receive financial aid. And so the average financial aid package at Loyola is about $38,000. So that price really comes down. So one of the last things I wanted to just say was if you wanted to come visit our campus, you can go to loyola.edu slash visit. It lists all of our visit opportunities. We are open in person for visits um, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. When you close this window, you, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Um, we encourage you to check back uh, at the schedule and sign up for more sessions. And if um, and you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash crystal ray. So thanks again, everyone. Have a good rest of your evening. Bye now.